So before we move on and get into the methodology, I just want to um, kind of cover some myth busting. There's some ideas about singing and um, that are propagated out in the industry and just in the general public that need to be addressed before we go any further. And um, I want you to be able to have a clear mind. We need to remove this baggage and these ideas that you might have signed up for that you might be believing in that are preventing you from, you know, going for it, from training and, and really diving into and diving into, into, you know, your journey of becoming a great singer. And always the first myth that needs to be busted is, is the myth that some people are born to sing and others are not. Okay. That's what people tend to think if they don't know any better. And I'm here to tell you that is completely wrong. I've been doing this for 20 years and I'm not BSing you right now. When I tell you nine out of 10 people can learn to sing better. They can learn to sing better. Why? Because as I said before, it's just a matter of physical athletic training. If you if you go through the repetition and the motor skills and the strength building, you will get stronger and you'll begin to sing better, provided that you have the right techniques and the right method, which we're going to show you today. All right. So, you know, the other thing about that is we can look back at a 400 year history of voice coaches and students working together to become better singers. I mean, it's at the university, it's at private schools, there's books. I mean, it's a, it's an industry that, exist for a reason because it's because the reality is is that although you may not have been born to sing like Bruno Mars there's a there's a rare small handful of people that are kind of born and they they sing great naturally but but that's very rare most people um can learn to sing really great if you just do the training and you learn how to do it okay here's another one Robert's style isn't the kind of singing I'm interested in. <laughs> now, I touched on this before. Remember we did the slide before with pictures of me singing. Sometimes students will come to me and they'll go, Robert, the program looks great. And, you know, I really appreciate all the hard work you've done on this thing. And I can tell you're helping a lot of singers. But, you know, your videos and your disposition is sort of a little bit like a rocker. Like, you seem like a rocker to me. So, so. Um, I don't want to sing rock and roll. That's not my gig. I want to do jazz. So I, I'm drawing the conclusion that you can't teach me to sing better. Again, that is bonk. Don't get confused between, between coaching styles and genres, which is a real thing. I, I do that with my students, but that's not what I'm showing you today. Don't get confused between coaching style and genre with training techniques. If you have the techniques and the motor skills and the strength, you can sing just about any style you want to. Okay. So this is about training and working out. So you can sing any style. So don't get confused on this point. Just because I kind of look and act like a rocker, that doesn't mean that you have to sing rock and roll. That's not what this is about. Next myth. Baritones can't sing high. All right. Guess what? That's completely false. Baritones can sing high. The traditional classical voice classifications are called vocal fach. That's F-A-C-H. It's German vocal fach. Okay, so when we talk about bass, baritone, tenor, alto, soprano, that's the vocal fach. The vocal fach really is only relevant to classical singing, all right, especially um, casting roles in opera and choral singing, where people have to sing together in a big, giant vocal chord. Which obviously, having these different voice classifications sort of makes sense because you're you're singing a big, giant chord. That's where it really that's where we really see it being relevant. But in contemporary singing, in contemporary commercial music vocal training techniques, which is what I do and what we're talking about and what a lot of you really need and want, the old traditional vocal fach doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And it says absolutely nothing about 
how high you can sing, okay? So baritones can sing high. A baritone can sing just as high as a tenor. Now, I'm a baritone, and if you go out and you listen to me sing, you can hear me singing really super high tenor parts, okay? And I'm able to do that because of the training and the methodology that I, that I developed, and um, you know, I train my own techniques, and I'll be showing you guys that. So you guys out there that think you're a baritone or been told you're a baritone, or even if you know you are a baritone, the message to you is, who cares? It doesn't matter. So stop worrying about that, okay? It's a big problem, and it can take the wind out of the sails of a lot of good, good singers that have potential, okay? And any voice coach that tells you, well, you're a baritone, you won't be able to sing high, red flag. Turn around, find the door, and run like hell because they're not doing you any favors. It's just wrong. Okay. Now, since we're in the, since we're talking about it, the difference between a baritone and a tenor doesn't have anything to do with how high you can sing. It has everything to do with the mass of the vocal folds, how thick the vocal folds are, the anatomy of the vocal folds, which then influences the sound color. So a baritone and a tenor will sing can sing the same high note. But when a baritone sings it, it's a little bit darker, a little bit chestier, a little bit fatter, a little bit boomier. In some regards, that's preferred. So stop, you baritones out there, stop thinking that you can't sing high. That's just completely bunk. You, you charge forward and you start training and you can do it. And I'll show you how. Here's one. But I can find free secret tips on YouTube. Free secret tips on YouTube are all I need. Um, come on, let's get real. Free secret tips on YouTube are um, entertaining, maybe. Uh, they can provide an occasional insight from time to time. But you're not going to get anywhere sitting on your duff watching YouTube, okay? Even if you collected the 50 best, most useful tips, all right, on YouTube, and you were a YouTube video tip collector, there's a lot of them out there. If that's you, it doesn't going to... It doesn't mean you're going to become a better singer. If you're not training, if you're not actually working on scales, 30 to 120 minutes, three to six days a week for 45 to 60 days, if you're not training and practicing and working out, it doesn't matter how many YouTube tips you've collected or how many channels you're surfing through. Um, you're just dreaming. You're wasting your time. And this, this program and this method is for is for people that want to train and get after it. So if that's you, I encourage you to keep listening. Here's one. My current program is good enough. My teacher said I'm not ready. My program doesn't have any bridging and connecting. All right, if any program or teacher you're working with just happens to not be addressing the bridging and connecting skills, if the content that you're working on or the lessons that you're having are not on the very first day addressing the ability and the necessity to sing seamlessly from the chest voice through the vocal break into the head voice without pushing, squeezing, and choking, if you're not having bridging and connecting and registration and singing in the head voice discussions and you're not doing workouts to help build that on the very first day, red flag red flag okay and if anybody ever tells you oh you're not ready for that you're not you're not ready to train your head voice you're not you're not ready to sing through the vocal break that is the biggest red flag of all now i'll just tell you a little little inside secret what that translates to is i don't know how to teach you how to how to bridge and connect and and instead of instead of admitting to you my student that i don't know how to teach you how to bridge and connect I'm going to turn the tables on you and make you feel like it's your problem or your limitation or that you're not ready. You know, something about you is preventing you from being able to bridge and connect. It's, it's just a, it's a, it's something that some students are told, unfortunately, it's sad by people that don't know how to teach them how to do what they need to do and what they're asking them to teach them to do. Okay. So. You can do this. It works. Believe me. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. Here's one. I have no time to practice and train. I'm too busy. I won't have the time. Well, how much time do you spend on Facebook every week? 
and doing social media. I mean, I look, I spend too much time on social media, but, but I'm trying to spend less time on social media. Um, the thing is, is, is when you understand how to train efficiently, when you have the techniques and a methodology that totally guides you step by step on what to do and shows you exactly where to go with training workflow guides, which we'll discuss later in this presentation, and other tools that get you the best results in the shortest amount of time. When you actually are the guy or the girl, the, you know, if you're the person that has that at your disposal to train with, then, then you're going to learn to bridge and connect quickly. You're going to save time. You're going to be the guy in this graphic that's pushing a ball instead of sliding a square, okay? So the point is, is what I'm going to show you, the methodology that I've developed, I've spent a lot of time developing, is efficient. It will get you where you need to go quickly.